Hey besties and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be giving some more opinions of mine. I know I've made so many other opinion videos before, but I have new opinions a lot and y'all seem to like them so just makes sense. You already know the disclaimer, just my opinion. Now let's get started with the video. This one is kind of more of a hard pill to swallow type of opinion. But it's true, y'all just hate to admit it. Not every idol you like and not even every group you stand is as funny as you think they are. Now, humor is very objective and everybody find different things funny, but some of y'all try to make things funny that aren't really like at all. This is not 2015, I hate to break it to you, but saying you got no jams isn't the peak comedy you think it is. And a lot of fandoms ruin a perfectly good joke and just run it to the ground. It was funny the first couple of times. But now it's annoying. Also, there's no need to be so damn defensive when someone doesn't think your faves aren't as funny as you think. Sometimes certain idols are just nice and talented. They don't always gotta be the comedian or crackhead you portray them as. This one. Oh this one is gonna be a lot. Might as well get some snacks. Cuse I gotta speak my truth. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many times I've been scrolling on TikTok or Instagram and have seen some dumbasses compare artists like Blackpink and Michael Jackson together. Not even a comparison, but some have even said that these groups are more talented or successful than some of the greats. Like damn, you really went on the internet, typed that out, posted it for everyone to see with your full chest and no regrets. I admire your boldness. I really do. Because only someone so dumb yet so bold can do some shit like that. It's not even about music taste, because that's subjective. It's the fact that you all think your faves having 100 million views in a generation where streaming and the internet is very accessible is comparable to a successful, influential, iconic black artist that's been around for decades and is everyone's icon. Not even talking about Michael Jackson. People have unironically compared Wendy to Whitney Houston, Bo to Janet Jackson. Nicki Minaj to Lisa, Nam June to Tupac and way more. Just to clarify, I think all of these idols are very talented and they deserve to have their hard work and skills appreciated, but y'all are doing it the wrong way. You do realize that these idols you're accusing of being better look up to them right? 98% of K-pop is heavily influenced by these artists and black culture in general. So the fact that people think it makes sense to say their faves are better and than these legendary black artists, putting them down just because they don't have billions of views is beyond me. I'm not accusing these fans of being racist, but you gotta admit, it's weird as fuck that they're so quick to put down black artists to uplift their biases. Now I'm not saying that any music video with millions of views means the music isn't good, because there's many extremely popular K-pop songs out there that are so slave. However, some of you all need to understand that just because a music video has tons of views, that doesn't always mean the song is gonna be good. For example, Permission to Dance. Before you get on my ass, I'm a BTS stan myself and love the boys so much. But this is by far their worst title track and honestly worst music video if we're being honest here. But that music video has around 500 million views and even a lot of armies didn't like the song that much either. This is just another reason why I don't like streaming culture. Of course, you should support your faves and vote and stream. However, people go way too far to a point where it's not about how good the song is. You just want them to get the most views. It's essentially a streaming competition at this point. So it doesn't matter how many views a music video got, the song can still be bad. I kind of already touched on this topic before, but I don't think fans understand how this is actually doing more harm than good. It's perfectly okay to find idols cute, maybe even adorable and such, but it gets weird when you start infantilizing a whole ass grown person. It's not even babying the way they speak or act. It's whenever an idol gets into a controversy and y'all wanna start acting as if that idol can't think or function on their own and they're just a little baby that does no wrong. Girl, they're 25 not 5 years old. Get a grip please. I'm not telling you to sexualize them or treat them as they're guilty all the time. But stop trying to blind them from taking accountability for their actions and just simply treat them like a human being. 
I've noticed that the K-pop community tends to pick on a specific female idol to hate on for no reason every few years and it's just gross at this point. Y'all gave Jennie absolute hell in 2018 and now passing it on to one young from I've. I hate the saying, but in this case it's true that most of y'all just hate pretty and popular women that are successful. Now, yes both Jennie and one young have done some insensitive or ignorant things before, but the crazy thing is that, those aren't the reasons why they got so much hate. I mean for fuck's sake, one young was getting death threats for eating a damn strawberry. A strawberry. Be fucking for real please. Even if she was trying to look cute while eating, who the hell cares? It's not hurting you or offending you and if something like that does offend you then you need help. People are so quick to call a girl a pick me girl without even knowing them. And do y'all forget it's her job to look good on camera? Just ridiculous how K-pop stands will hop on a hate train for a female idol without even even knowing why. Just dumb really. I can't be the only one who thinks this. I've seen so many rookie groups debut with only singles and I don't understand why they're doing that. I feel like if companies really want to pull in the public's attention for their new group, then give them a mini album so we can hear what they sound like more. Because there are some groups out there where we barely get to hear their sound. I think B-Sides can really show a different side of groups and make people want to stand them more. For example with Red Velvet and Luna, a lot of people started liking them more for their quality B-Sides. And these mini albums don't even need to have many songs on it, maybe around 5-7 songs including the title track. It just overall helps new fans get familiar with their sound early on and feels like a smarter move to me. This is for those fans that always assume that another idol or group is copying their faves just because they do a similar concept, vaguely similar sound, or even same hair color. Of course there have been situations where groups have actually stolen from other groups or artists with no credit, but there's a line between that. Many things have been done in K-pop before, so unless it's a proven fact, Stop trying to assume that your group is the pioneer of a widely used concept or hairstyle. Not everyone is trying to copy them either. It's not that serious. I'm sorry, but why is BTS usually at the scene of this crime? First Halsey, then Sia, then Ed Sheeran. Like the only good one in my opinion was the Megan Thee Stallion one and Nicki Minaj. The Halsey one wasn't bad. It was just unnecessary. Girl only had 5 seconds of lines and added no flavor, nothing at all. Most of other K-pop groups like Blackpink, Momoland, and that one Monster X collab just aren't it at all. And they just collaborate with the most random artists like who the hell is French Montana? I just wish they would pick better artists that are actually slave. Like Let Rina Sawayama, Hayley Williams, or Flow on the track please. I just wish these collabs had more effort put into them. This seriously needs to be talked about. For those who don't know, some girl basically dumped all her trauma on Woo Young from G's without warning or anything. Now yes, I do think it's okay to rant a little or tell an idol you're talking to about some slight issues going on, but telling them your entire childhood trauma and going into very sensitive topics like abuse and more is way too much. A lot of fans need to realize these idols are human too, also meaning they have their own triggers and troubles they've been through also, so you still need to be aware of what you're talking about with them and how it might affect them. I understand that some fans may not have anyone to talk to. So talking to an idol they love could be refreshing for them, it's still not right and you need to be more considerate. We been knew this, but I don't understand why he's deemed as one of the greatest producers in K-pop. Of course, I'm not a producer myself but like there's so many other great K-pop producers rather than him. His stuff was great at first, but it just became very stale and used up, he especially doesn't know how to end a song at all. YG needs a new producer for real because it's getting tiring. Before y'all start some shit, I'm not a girl group stan nor am I a boy group stan so this has nothing to do with my bias towards gendered groups. I feel like people don't realize how much misogyny there is within K-pop, even with stage presence. Great example with Irene or Winter. They're both known for having boring stage presence and have even gotten hate for it or called a bitch. This is not a dig to him. But Jaehyun or Do Young doesn't have consistently great stage presence either, but nobody says anything about him. Now, 
Nobody should get hate for simply their stage presence, but it's just the double standards that's annoying. Even with Suki from Billy, she got hate for overdoing it. Like what do you all want? Either they're doing too much or not enough. The only male idol I've heard that's been talked badly about stage presence wise is Sam. Y'all literally only care or call out bad stage presence if it's a female idol doing it and it's weird. And that's the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed, please like and subscribe if you'd want and have a good day. Bye besties.